On today's show, Tesla sets new records for deliveries and production in the first quarter of this year. Lucid completes an 800 mile round trip between Silicon Valley and Los Angeles with just two chargers and the diesel conversion from a salvaged Tesla Model S that's uh, not all it appears to be. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we are 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup show. I hope you're all well and safe and you've not gone crazy with all that social isolation. Me? Uh, well, I'm half crazy most of the time, so frankly, I've not noticed any difference. The first quarter of this year from hell ended this week. Yeah, we're now more than a quarter of the way through 2020. And in keeping with its usual practice, Tesla has published preliminary production and delivery figures for the same period. Despite everything that's going on, Tesla managed to produce an impressive 102,672 cars during the quarter, with Tesla Model 3 and Model Y taking the lion's share with 87,282 vehicles between them. Of the total vehicles made, 88,400 Teslas were delivered to customers in total, with 12,200 Model S and X and 76,200 Model 3 and Model Y. I would expect second quarter figures to be lower for obvious reasons, but kudos to Tesla for such a strong start to the year. Like many automakers at the moment, Rivian has been forced to change some of its immediate plans, including pushing back its production plans for the R1T and R1S electric pickup and electric SUV. But prior to local shelter-in-place orders, the startup shot a new behind-the-scenes video at its production facility in Normal, Illinois, where both of its vehicles will be made. While the video is bittersweet in its own way, Rivian isn't sure how much its production schedule will be impacted, but it says it's working on minimizing the disruption, we did get to see some of the plant equipment being installed, as well as hear about the new battery testing area that Rivian has set up to test the massive battery packs its vehicles will use. The video is well worth a watch, so I'll link to it below. Audi may also be experiencing some form of lockdown and reduction in production, but that didn't stop the company from holding its official debut of several models, including the Audi e-tron Sportback. Essentially a slightly less boxy version of the e-tron already on sale, the e-tron Sportback is less SUV and more coupe in its appearance. Officially, Audi is claiming 277 miles on the WLTP test cycle for the higher spec variant e-tron Sportback 55. You should expect less on the EPA test cycle, with a 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 5.7 seconds. A shorter range version called the Audi e-tron 50 Sportback will also be available in Europe at launch later this spring. But like its SUV sibling, don't expect the shorter range version in North America. Lucid is yet another automaker feeling the pinch of stay-at-home orders, confirming that it's pushing back its planned reveal event until August this year for the Lucid Air with production similarly delayed. This week, however, it also published a video showing developmental progress of the Air Sedan, and it's very impressive. The video shows a pre-production Lucid Air prototype being driven from the company's headquarters in the San Francisco Bay Area all the way to Los Angeles down the 101 before returning to the Bay along the I-5. That's a round trip of more than 800 miles, but the Lucid Air prototype managed the outward leg on a single charge, returning the next day, having just charged overnight. I think we can agree that that is some serious range capabilities. There's been increasing pressure of late on automakers to improve their accountability when it comes to ethical sourcing of components for their vehicles. And this week, BMW announced it's doing just that, launching its own blockchain tracking system for raw materials. Blockchain technology, which most people think of being part of cryptocurrency, can offer a whole lot more than just process Bitcoin transactions. And in this case, BMW says it's helping the company ensure that the materials it uses in its vehicles are ethically sourced. We're actually almost complete with animation and production on a video explaining blockchain technology and how it fits into the EV world. 
so please keep your eyes peeled for that in the next few weeks. Honda and General Motors have previously worked on joint projects focused on hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, but this week the two firms confirmed that they will be working on two all-new electric vehicles specifically for Honda. The vehicles will launch for the 2024 model year and will be sold in North America as Hondas, using the same chassis and battery systems as all of General Motors' new promised electric vehicles, namely the Ultium battery system unveiled last month. Honda is of course already developing its own electric vehicle platforms for Europe and Asia, but using GM's system for its North American cars makes a lot of sense, especially as it recently ended production of the Clarity EV last month. BMW has revealed the details of the hydrogen fuel cell drivetrain it's developed in collaboration with Toyota. It's the same system that will underpin the next generation Toyota Mirai fuel cell sedan, which will launch later this year, as well as the system underpinning the BMW iHydrogen Next concept that the company unveiled last year. With a more powerful fuel cell stack that's made using a mainly automated process the first time this has happened, the next generation powertrain is said to be more efficient and a lot less costly than today's Toyota Mirai fuel cell sedan system and will power a limited production X5 based hydrogen fuel cell SUV in North America in the near future. Despite this, however, BMW does seem unsure of FCV technology, saying that volume production won't happen until very much later this decade. With deliveries of high-end dual motor performance Model Ys now very much underway, Tesla is reportedly reaching out to reservation holders for the lower spec rear wheel drive Model Y to see if they're ready to finalize their order and start the process of delivery planning. While it's not 100% clear what timelines are, it seems that a drop in demand caused by you know what, or rather a drop in the number of reservation holders who are able and ready to take ownership of their high-end Model Ys right now, is causing Tesla to push forward its lower spec Model Y production plans. And thus, especially if you're in North America and you have a reservation for a rear-wheel drive Model Y, you may get it sooner than you first thought. Although Audi has only one electric vehicle on sale right now, with the second one coming later this spring in Europe, it's already got plenty of different vehicle platforms ready for all of those upcoming models it's been promising us for some time. And this week it published a blog post detailing some of the details behind those platforms, ranging from the MEB electrification toolkit that it plans to use for the Audi Q4 e-tron, which is the same platform that Volkswagen ID3s are built on, through to the MLB Evo platform that the current e-tron is built on, the J1 performance platform that the Audi e-tron GT concept shares with the Porsche Taycan, and the premium platform Electric, a platform that will underpin a future high-performance Audi model. And yes, I'm aware that spells PPE, just a different PPE focused on going fast, not keeping you safe from viruses. In addition to showcasing its A3 Sportback and A3 e-tron Sportback earlier this week, Audi also showcased two new prototypes being tested on track, the Audi e-tron S and the Audi e-tron S Sportback. Essentially higher-end all-out performance variants of the e-tron and e-tron Sportback respectively, these high-end cars share a brand new triple motor drivetrain system that can put out 370 kilowatts at the wheels. That's significantly more than the standard 300 kilowatts peak output of the e-tron and e-tron Sportback. With a 4.5 second sprint time, they're also a lot faster than the standard variants and will likely enter production in the next year or two. It's not clear what the range will be, but it could go either way because as Tesla has shown, more powerful motors doesn't necessarily mean a reduced range. And finally, it was April 1st this week, and while many people refrained from the usual pranks, we have to take our hats off to the team at Inside EVs, who came up with a howler of a story. The premise? Tesla's unwillingness to let people rebuild salvage cars, leading someone to convert a Tesla Model S to a diesel-powered vehicle, powered by the very same engine found at the heart of the Dieselgate scandal. The story itself was pure gold, and it got several people worked up. But we have to say we sniffed that one out pretty quickly. What was your favourite prank this year? <laughs> Let me know below.
And on that note, that's your lot for today. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, please do send it our way virus or not. Make sure that you hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on our next episode. And of course, while you're at it and you've got a browser open, why not switch to New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company? They make it super easy to make the switch. And if you do, you're going to help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for many years to come. We'll be making some more fun content for you all to enjoy next week. But until then, please stay safe. Remember to wash your hands and keep healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time. Bye.